Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about why fearful avoidance often suddenly leave a relationship. So this is a huge pattern that I noticed for so many different individuals, and it's very difficult for people to be on the receiving end of this. Like, it's really not fun to feel like things are going great in your relationship, and then all of a sudden the rug gets pulled out from under you. And in doing that, all of a sudden you're in a position where you're like, what happened? Trying to find closure, trying to put the pieces together. And yet this breakup is happening seemingly all of a sudden. So why is this taking place? And what can you do to both fix it potentially? or to make sure that you're not in a position where this sort of thing happens again. So first and foremost, the reasons this happens with a fearful avoidant in a relationship is literally because fearful avoidants often do not speak up about their needs. They are in a position because of their hypervigilance and their ability to read people that developed as an adaptation, basically in the, in the face of trauma, they are in a position where they are um, very good at reading between the lines, really good at picking up on like micro expressions, body language, tone of voice, all these different things. And as a byproduct of all of that, they basically expect that other people will do the same. And so when they don't see people, you know, meeting their needs and intuitively knowing what their needs are, they really tend to take that as I'm not cared about, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve to receive. And they start building up this resentment, this frustration, they start telling stories to themselves about why this is happening. They're not really loved, the person's disrespecting them, all these different things. And then all of a sudden they will, you know, flee because they tend to have a really strong flight response when they feel like they, you know, are, are sort of like overflowing with that resentment. So the background patterns for the fearful when doing this are really that they're not communicating their needs. They're expecting people to mind read um, because they are good at reading between the lines and they sort of expect that of somebody else. Um, they also get into a position quite often where when they find these patterns coming up um, where their needs are not being met, they really storytell about that. And they're like, oh, it's because I can't trust this person. It's because they're not caring. It's because, and they fill in the blanks with meaning. That's usually something that really can create some poisonous dynamics in the relationship. And so that resentment boils up and then all of a sudden it hits that tipping point. And at that tipping point, the fearful avoidance suddenly sort of just disappears from the relationship or says, you know, my needs haven't been met for a long time. And this is something I see all the time with people coming to me to talk about these different things inside the school. So um, I wanted to make a video about it for that reason. And then what can you do about this? Well, first and foremost, um, we have an amazing course coming out in about 15 days. There is a prerequisite you have to take. You really want to take the boundaries course prior to doing this. But the course is basically about how to reconcile any relationship. And this applies to um, parental relationships. You're trying to work out something with a parent, a sibling, um, a cousin or some other family member a friendship where there's, you know, pieces that have sort of been pulled apart, or of course, a romantic relationship. As long as that relationship is healthy, you're in it for the right reasons, and you're mindful and respectful of your boundaries as you work on the reconciliation component. And that's why we say the boundaries course first, because we can't go in and try to repair something at our own expense if we're not taking ourselves into consideration and really mastering that part now. So if you want to do a deep dive into this, I highly recommend um, jumping into the school now. I'll put a link in the description box below in terms of like how to reconcile relationships. Um, you can get started on the boundaries course. So you're done just in time for when we um, come out with the how to repair any re relationship course. But some high level tips for that perspective are, um, you need to have a conversation about what, what wasn't working. Um, as it relates to the fearful avoidance specifically, because that's what this video is about, you need to tell a fearful avoidant, hey, you're not speaking up about your needs. I want to meet them. I'm not good at mind reading the way you are or reading between the lines. I may be okay at it, but I'm not as hypervigilant. I want to meet your needs, but I need you to communicate them. I need you to communicate them consistently. I'm here. I really care. You want to have conversations about boundaries, how to identify your boundaries, how to communicate about boundaries going forward, how to identify your needs, how to communicate about those needs going forward. All of that stuff is in both of those courses I mentioned. Um, if you want to go deeper into more detail, and then you really want to make sure that you have ways of communicating this that are effective, again, mentioned in those courses in a lot of detail with scripts, everything. Um, and you want to have a rebonding phase of a relationship, which is all about learning to speak in the person's love language during the reconciliation phase, um, which I have other videos on this channel about learning to 
communicate in a way um, where you learn to meet the other person's needs and you learn to communicate your needs. And then you make sure that you are doing this like rebond building um, by doing things that make you feel really connected. So whatever, you know, really drew you to one another at the beginning of the phase, how to identify this, how to sort of dive back into those things. Was it because you had a lot of fun together? Was it because you both like to adventure, to explore? Was it because you both love deep conversation? And then how to go back, identify those big connectors, reignite them in, in the relationship phase as you were also doing the work to communicate needs, break down patterns that weren't working, come up with strategies and solutions together, know your boundaries, and all these different things start to really move things in a different direction. The only big disclaimer here is please do not do this work. Do not even start this work. If you are with somebody who's not healthy, who's not showing up to do the work with you, otherwise, honestly, there isn't a whole lot of point in doing that. So um, really great topic. So much to say about this. Again, um, a ton of information I have about this in, in tremendous detail, the steps in which order, um, strategies, tools, charts in there for how to sort of lay everything out, like very, very specific to a lot of these different problems and patterns. Um, so you can check those out. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of these videos. And I will see you in the next one.